we want to find dy dx, or the derivative of y with respect to x, of the equation sine xy equals y squared. So because we have an implicit equation, meaning it's not solved for y, we'll have to apply implicit differentiation to find dy dx. So let's start with a quick review of implicit differentiation. We'll first differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. Then we'll apply the rules of differentiation as we normally do. But any time an expression involving y is differentiated, dy dx will be a factor of the result. And this is because we'll be applying the chain rule. Then we'll isolate all the terms with dy dx as a factor on one side of the equation. There may be one term or several terms with dy dx as a factor. If there's more than one term with dy dx, we'll factor out dy dx and then divide both sides of the equation to isolate dy dx. So going back to our equation, to find dy dx, we'll first differentiate both sides with respect to x. So we'll have the derivative of sine xy with respect to x. On the left and on the right, we'll have the derivative of y squared with respect to x. Now we'll go ahead and apply our derivative formulas. All the formulas that we need are provided here. To find the derivative of sine xy with respect to x, we'll use this formula here. Notice how we have an inner function of x times y, so we'll have to apply the chain rule. So the derivative of sine xy is equal to cosine xy. This is the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function, which would be the derivative of x times y with respect to x. This will require the product rule, so we'll come back to this, equals the derivative of y squared with respect to x. And because this term is y, we'll have to apply the chain rule, meaning we'll have a factor of dy dx. So the derivative of y squared would be two times y to the first, which is two y, but then we have a factor of dy dx, so times dy dx. Now we'll find this derivative here, but because we have a product of two functions, one in terms of x and one in terms of y, we'll have to apply the product rule so looking at our derivative formulas, here's the product rule. So following this formula, our first function x will be equal to f, and the second function y will be equal to g. So our derivative will be f times g prime plus g times f prime. So we'll have cosine xy times the first function x times the derivative of the second, which is y, well, the derivative of y would be one, but we also have a factor of dy dx because this is the y term. So again, we're applying the chain rule, plus the second function, which is y, times the derivative of the first function, which is x, with respect to x, which would just be one. Again, here we don't need a factor of dy dx because this is an x term, not a y term. This is still equal to two y dy dx. And now we need to clear the parentheses, so we'll distribute the cosine xy here and here. This first product would be x cosine xy dy dx. The second product would be y cosine xy. It's still equal to two y dy dx. Notice how we have two terms that contain a factor of dy dx, here and here. So we need these two terms on the same side of the equation so that we can solve for dy dx by factoring. So we'll go ahead and subtract two y dy dx on both sides. We'll also move this term to the right by subtracting y cosine xy on both sides. So that would give us x cosine xy dy dx minus two y dy dx equals negative y cosine xy. 
Now we're going to go ahead and factor out the common factor of dy dx. That'll leave us with x cosine xy minus 2y equals negative y cosine xy. And now to solve for dy dx, we'll divide both sides by this difference here. So notice how this would simplify to one. So now we have dy dx. dy dx is equal to this quotient here. And that'll do it for this example. I hope you found this helpful.